This route runs from Beacon Hill through to Bagworth in Leicestershire. Starting at the Beacon Hill car park, the route heads west up and around the hill itself, curving back eastward before heading southeast across the fields to Woodhouse Eaves. Picking up a route around the edge of the village, it heads down the roads past Hunger and Brand Hills to then take the trail south through Swithland Wood. Emerging across the fields southwestward, the route skirts the northern edge of Bradgate Park before heading southeast across the park itself, turning at the Great House ruins to briefly head through Newtown Linford. From here then, it's the route south across the fields and through Lawn Wood and around Grooby Pool and briefly along the A50 road. Then it's down and through Martin Shaw Wood and over the M1 motorway. Passing through the tail end of the woods once more, the route then goes westward through Ratby Burrows and alongside Forest Hill Golf Club. Next, it's west across the fields to Thornton with a diversion alongside its beautiful reservoir before taking the long green road northwest to Bagworth Wood and then finally back across the fields to end up at Bagworth Sports Ground. So today, as we start off on the 20th Walking Mile Pools Walk, we're going to be tackling the National Forest Way. Now I had planned to start from the far end of this, uh, but Mrs. Lama declared she didn't want to drive all that way today. So <laughs> she may come to regret that, as the end of this route, some 75 miles away, is a good 45 minutes drive from our home, and she'll be driving me further and further the longer I get into this route. Anyway, off we go here on Beacon Hill Park. We appear to have quite a few dog walkers around here this morning. Also have fun later on as my discovered my map was too old on the southern bit of this route today <laughs> to actually have the route on it. So I've been drawing it with pen. Proper map making today. You know, it seems between my last video, uh, two or three weeks ago, and this one, that autumn has arrived with a vengeance here in Leicestershire. I'm walking through rather damp terrain, but that's not been uh, something we haven't had this summer, but it's the mists and the wind, and definitely a sense that autumn is here. You can begin to see the foliage dying back in quite a few places. Anyway, Beacon Hill, interesting place to start from. Annoyingly, uh, minimum car park charge, two pounds, just over an hour, just to stop and drop someone off. So hence, most people drop off, uh, shall we say, <laughs> less than licitly. Why Leicestershire car parks and new spots don't have a sort of 15, 20 minute drop off fee of 20p or 50p even. So you don't have to pay a fortune just if you're dropping someone off to go hiking, walking or running. Very frustrating. Uh, let's rip off from Leicestershire for you. And certainly this part of Leicestershire does seem to have the highest priced car parks in the region. Anyway, after we're out of Beacon Park, we're going to be going for a little while. And then, <laughs> joy of joys, we get to climb up Bradgate again. And up old John. Which, as you may remember from my previous video, was kind of the climax, almost, of the round. So... I guess I am starting off slightly um, retreading some of the ground, but thankfully once we're through Newtown Linford beyond Bradgate Park, it's all new terrain from that point forward. Mostly. <laughs> you might recognise a few of the names of the places we go through initially before we head most definitely westward towards Staffordshire. Well, that's a definitely a good sign. A field with some alpacas in. There's another one. Just cushing away in the background over there too. Oh, but aren't you lovely? Well, this llama's got to carry on. Just moving through the back passage of Woodhouse Eaves, which was harder to find than I thought it was going to be. I realised, of course, when I was glancing at the map earlier, I was looking at the round. And no, no, the route doesn't go immediately down to Newtown Linford here. We've got quite a detour. So, you may remember Woodhouse Eaves was towards the end of the round route when I did it. And I had to do a little bit of the same bit. But now at least, walking down the path, it's, I have to confess, completely new to me. 
And that's despite the fact I've walked through Woodhassies countless times in the past. So, you know, goes to show. Doing a long distance path, even your own local area can really uncover some unexpected delights. Oh, that's a nice house. But then Woodhassies is full of really nice houses. Bit of road walking to come now, and then back out onto the fields. Well, hopefully not too many fields, because I mean, this is the National Forest Way. Surely it should be full of forests and trees. And certainly, autumnal no leaf litter. Well, next neck of the woods, as it were, it's Switzerland Woods, which is rather nice. Bit of steep climb to access the route. Thankfully, not too long a steep climb. And a signage of the National Forest Trail so far. Pretty good. You can see another sign ahead there. That's always a good. Oh dear, I was going to say sign. I'm so sorry. I do apologise. The walking's addled my ability to make jokes. Right, straight on we go. <laughs> Razzy Valley was straight on, that's a curve to the right. At least it's following the main track and not disappearing off into the woods <laughs> from whence I might never return. Well, after a slight quarter of a mile detour in Switzerland Woods, when the signage suddenly got very ambiguous, here we are coming up to the outskirts of Bradgate Park. That is indeed on the hill there, Old John the Folly, and the annoyingly steep hill I'm going to have to climb again. Maybe it's not as knackering as it was last time. It's going to be, isn't it? Lovely lush grass field here to my right. I'm surprised I've not been cut for haylage or silage already. It's just left us lovely pasture land. But it doesn't have the look of it having any animals in it. It's very even. Some interesting buildings over there. Probably part of the Leicester filtration works, I suspect. Past that on the road on the way to the. Uh, here. You know, I thought this side of Old John would be the easy bit of the ascent. Of course, what I've forgotten is I had to come down up from the valley over there first. So the, the final ascent is much easier and full of potholes uh, and shorter than the ascent on the other side. You still climb a long way, even on this route. So if you excuse me, I'm going to turn the camera off and concentrate on climbing this hill. Actually, I think all in all, it probably was the easier ascent back way around. Uh, not sorry to be saying goodbye to old John on this route. As you can see, it's still really quite misty, although the sun keeps threatening to break through. Oh, it's actually a tiny patch of blue sky up there, but very, very tiny. It's mid-September, what do I expect really? I suppose it's normal September weather now, for the heat wave of the previous week. It's also nice here in Bradgate Park, this section, because there's far, far fewer people walking it. I know when I get down to the pathway beyond the, uh, the Grey's house that, uh, <laughs> yes, all of a sudden it's going to be a lot busier. I mean, it's Saturday morning. It wouldn't surprise me if I run to a park run. I've already run to one of those up at Beacon Hill. Ooh, yes. Not beyond that post. That's the Deer's private reserve in there. Uh, there's a very nice little path that walks right past <laughs> these posts. Yeah, I just checked the myometer. So far, uh, six miles into the route, so not that far along today yet. Plenty of hills have been done. I'm you know, I'm kind of hopeful that the hills were stacked at the end of the walk, at the start of the walk today, and that as I continue on, 
<laughs> it'll get a little flatter. I will not, of course, be holding my breath for that. There may have been big hills to come, but hopefully not as big as Beacon Hill and um, Brandgate Park itself. Well, we're beyond Newtown Linford now, and on our way down to Grooby through a bit which I can see has got a bit of forest, just not a lot of it. It's one of these things about the, the National Forest Zone is there's definitely bits of it that are more wooded than others. Although so far, um, Bradgate Park aside, there have been plenty of tree covered roots, which has been very nice. It's not the kind of day where I need to worry too much about getting sunburnt at least. So I'm not craving the shade of the trees, but they are beautiful to walk under. So hopefully this is going to be a nice, easy path. And more importantly, after the chaos and <laughs> swarming masses in Bradgate Park, a quiet and relatively solitary trek. Well, it looks like what was a straight-ish path turned out to be very deceptive and the main branch sent me off on a bit of a diversion around the, the far side of a groovy pool. It's a bit of a shame. I was going so well until that point. However, it was a diversion with hot and cold running geese, another wildfowl. So uh, you always know how I'd like to see some wildfowl when I'm out. That's not the end of the world. It does unfortunately mean though I'm going to have to walk up uh, the fairly busy looking A road ahead for about half a mile to rejoin the route. Oh, maybe a quarter of a mile. Yeah. Anyway, walking along an A road at any point is not much fun. See my earlier videos, particularly all in Lincolnshire, walking down the A15, about <laughs> how much I do not like that experience. But never mind, this is all part and parcel of the exploration. Sometimes you find bits that are well marked and well rooted, and other times you get diverted and find unexpected bits. You're really lucky you get a whole day when you uh, don't get off piste, as it were. Never mind, we'll soon be back on the National Forest Way. And in the meantime, I can admire the buzzards who are circling over there, hopefully not looking for me for lunch. Well, after the hell of that A road, here we are in Martingshaw Wood, which despite, I can still hear the distant noise of traffic on the A road, is so much nicer and more advantage of because to access it you did have to cross the A road or walk down alongside a busy A road. I've more or less got the place to myself today. It's not the kind of place you can easily come and park and walk. As such, you haven't got any people, any dog walkers or the like in it. So yeah, this bit of the National Forest Trail definitely living up to expectations. I am going to be glad because the further west we go, the more spaced out the villages get and the further away we get from the kind of teeming northwest, north bit of Leicestershire, which is all very overpopulated. And now it seems a bit more of the, the wilds. And then unfortunately I think we get the Ashby, so that's a bit of a drawback, but not today at least. And hopefully by next time I will have a new map to use rather than the uh, very outdated one I'm using today, which I had to draw the route on with a felt tip. Well, I have to say, this bit absolutely diabolically poorly marked. I've only managed to sort of cross about a quarter of a mile of bracken to try and find the route back, because the route that the sign posted was not the route. I ended up going miles off, well, <laughs> figuratively miles. But, oh! Yeah, definitely the National Forest Trail, poorly marked so far on the whole. There's stretches of it, but there's you know, a few markers. You go, great, this is good, this is marked. And then miles go by without a single solitary marker. So uh, yeah, which is a shame, because apart from the terrible route marking, this was actually quite a nice wood. But my legs are absolutely cut to buggery now, so. Ow. Definitely gonna bring a machete on the next part of the route. Well, we're now skirting through Burroughs Wood. Wood, which I just noticed, also has a G-plus account. 
Good Lord, G Plus. That takes you back about 15 years. Social media networks we have known and lost. Ooh. That appears to be a bike line. Let me get this on camera. <clears throat> okay, I know Leicestershire is a bit rural, but that's taking the mick. We have advanced beyond the age of biplanes. It's noticeable that after the last woods, the trail marking has distinctly improved in that there actually is some now. So that's cheered me up no end. Although after battling through all that underbrush, oh my legs are not only cut to pieces, they're very tired. So kind of hoping I can find a second wind to keep going on to my planned destination, but at this point it's a case of take it a mile at a time and see if I can keep going. Currently passing through old Hayes Wood uh, down a reasonably overgrown <laughs> green road. It's passable, just about out. There's a bramble, <laughs> of which there are many. Any minute now, you know, it's going to open out a bit more. Uh, maybe it is now. There's only a couple of fields length <laughs> of it already. Oh, that looks like an entrance to a field. <laughs> that looks good. I did have a horrible feeling it was going to close up completely and I'd be uh, sort of trapped. Uh, there we go, field and ah, oh, the comforting sign of the national forest way. And oh, the less comforting sight of oh, it's a sodding golf course. Right, see one is just walking straight down the edge here. I think that's what the map seems to suggest. <coughs> Does that mean I'm going to have dodging balls coming my way? I thought it well, I dodged the uh, golf course earlier. I oh, know there's been one later on the route. Out beyond the golf course now and into the fields again and that ahead of us is Thornton which I remember coming across in the round going um, from the uh, going eastwards and this time we're going south north across it I remember it was up a very very steep hill and I'm horrible feeling I go down the hill up the hill down the hill and up the hill again according to the route of, I, I can see Bit crackers but that's the national forest way this is the way as they say so the farmers managed to uh, plow right up almost into the headland here <coughs> so the footpath such as it is um nearly non-existent always oh, so helpful when Farmers do that. That's, if you think the camera's jerking around a bit, it's not half jerking around as much as I am. I'm <laughs> trying to keep my footing on this. It's not very even. Oh, a slightly larger bit of headland. What a shock. Oh, look, and no headland at all here. So I'm just gonna have to walk straight across <laughs> Blount Field. Oh, no, look, there is a tiny bit of headland back. Yeah, it's not a classic bit of field path, this. Still, these are nice. If we can ignore the industry over there. The sheep are picturesque at least. I see no sheep, not llamas. We, can't, we couldn't be lucky to get alpacas and llamas on twice on today's journey. Down now at Thornton Reservoir, uh, which, oh, look at that, a whole flock of geese out there. I think they're Canada geese. You can hear them honking in the distance. Now the route kind of came down from the village main road, diverted down the hill. Uh, which just me able to walk back up the hill very shortly at the end of the reservoir. But I thought, you know what, you're going to do this route. You've got to do it authentically. You can't take <laughs> shortcuts. Admittedly, I've taken some long cuts today, but I've got slightly lost. But where are possible, obviously, following the route. Oh, anyway, still going. Kind of glad I'm not going back up that hill to the right. 
coming off there in the wind. It's surprisingly windy today, catches you unawares. But at least that makes it a little bit cooler. So out of Thornton, uh, back across the field now towards Bagworth, which actually I can see all over there already. Bagworth, as I commented before, always sounds like somewhere where you would find hobbits. Although it's next mining town, so you're more likely to find, I guess, dwarves going on Tolkien's approach. Actually, I went through last time, the locals just seem quite nice, nice and normal and friendly, so. I have made arrangements for Mrs. Lama, though, to pick me up in the next 45 minutes or so. And I'm just going to find out quite how much further I'm going on this walk. Might just be Bagworth. I'm hoping I've got another half a mile or so with my legs left. After that, we'll have to see. Still, it's quite nice. <laughs> the route for the last few miles has been well marked again. And I think we're just about passing 16 miles today. And a lot of hills. <laughs> so I'm quite pleased with my progress, even with the various diversions and missteps I went on. Well, that time again. If you haven't already, give this video a like. And if you really enjoyed it, why not subscribe to catch all my videos? Yep, I have decided. I've just looked at the distance. I'm nearly coming up on 17 miles. This is very rough terrain I'm crossing. As you can probably tell by the camera shake. <laughs> and yeah, my legs are about done in for today. But I'm happy with the distance I've got done. It's just one little short of my kind of stretch goal. This is my kind of target to get to. I think I put a mile or so on of unnecessary diversion, thanks to poor route marking. That's always a problem on these long distance footpaths. Sections are well maintained, other sections aren't. But, yep, our village ahead. Getting going to go down to the sports ground, and that's where we're going to call it today. And hopefully, Mrs. Lyle will be there to pick me up. And there we are, Bagworth, and um, just the entrance to their sports ground where I'll be starting from next time. Oh, yeah, I'm glad I stopped. Over 17 miles of rugged terrain and a lot of hills, more than up to date. Anyway, see you for the next bit of the uh, National Forest Way.